Big news for the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan this week, which will see a changing of the guard at the start of next year. The current CEO, Ron Mock, is set to retire after a long career with the fund and five years in his latest role. And under his leadership, Canada's largest pension fund has seen its asset base grow by roughly $50 billion. Ron Mock joining us now from his office in Toronto. Ron, thanks very much for being with us. Great to be back, John. So, uh, I guess give our, give our viewers a, a little of the backstory here. Uh, we mentioned five years in this current role and, and, and roughly 20 with teachers. Why was this the right time for you to make this announcement? Well, first of all, it's, it's, a, it's a privilege to have been in this role. Um, and by the time the end of the year comes around, it'll be six years. And um, I've, I've made a lot of changes and adjustments to the plan over the last six years that really are designed to set us up for the future decade, the decade going forward. And um, uh, it, it's the right time. Um, this has to be passed on to the next generation. And we've got great leadership in uh, Joe Taylor, who um, uh, the succession committee and the board uh, has chosen. Joe is a very, very experienced uh, leader, a very experienced investor and um, uh, an excellent choice to uh, lead the company for the next five to ten years. You, you talked about setting things up for the future. Obviously, a lot of that has been international. There have been so many deals over the years as well. I mean, is there anything in particular that stands out for you that, that makes you feel good about where Teachers is headed longer term? Well, I think there's three components to what uh, will be critical in the next decade. And that is global competition. We have to be prepared for that. And to that end, we are continuing to expand globally, particularly in Asia. The uh, talent story, uh, particularly when you're attracting fresh new talent uh, into this business, um, you have to really, really uh, focus in on attracting that talent, retaining it, developing it. And so that's been a big strategic push for us uh, uh, in the last five years. And then finally, technology. As everybody knows, uh, artificial intelligence and big data are, are something that every company is wrestling with. And you need technology to leverage that talent. Because in our business, the assets go up and down the elevator every single day. And so technology is leveraging our talent. And our talent, we are expanding it globally uh, to make sure that we can deliver on our mission of, of, uh, for the teachers of Ontario and deliver a uh, fully funded plan. You know, tech, technology seems to be everywhere with teachers right now, whether it's using technology for the business itself or this news that you guys have become an investor in SpaceX. And it does feel like for these longer term technology bets, pension funds might be the ideal fit for those kind of investments. I mean, should we expect more big long term investments in, in, in technology plays like SpaceX? Uh, you should expect it. I would argue that um, uh, this brand new department that we've set up around, we call it the Innovation Platform, it's headed up by um, Olivia Steedman, who is uh, one of our best and brightest. And it really is about investing in technology as it impacts. And given our global uh, platform, where we have offices in, uh, in uh, London and also in Hong Kong to capture Europe and Asia, uh, our connectivity into the uh, technology world is substantial. And so building partnerships around the world with the Googles and the Tencents and um, uh, the, the SpaceX and others is a critical part of being, um, uh, it's, a, it's a platform for the investing in the future and we just have to be there. So um, we're ready for it. Uh, we've, we've built the department uh, focused on doing that and I'm very excited about it. And SpaceX uh, was their first uh, investment. So um, obviously you're looking at public and private investment opportunities. Uh, most of our audience is, is looking at stocks uh, and public market opportunities out there. And because we've been in this low interest rate environment for so long, and that's been the narrative again this week, um, you look at the technology stocks and the run they've had over the last decade, it's, uh, it's pretty incredible. Um, what would you say about this low rate environment? Uh, we've heard a lot of conversation, especially from the Fed this week, about how that's going to impact um, the kinds of investments that can be winning successful longer term? Well, I, I think over the long, long haul, we're a long term investor. Yeah. 
and we look at things from that perspective. When we strategically focus in on areas that we think are critical uh, and will have to be part of, uh, of, of future growth, uh, technology is part of it. And from, from our perspective, uh, the low interest rate environment um, is, is, is here. We're facing a global slowdown. There's a global slowdown happening in the economy. And um, uh, that's what has led to uh, interest rate uh, curves projecting that we're going to be in a, a low interest rate environment for a long time. It makes it tricky. Uh, things are expensive right now. And this is where uh, the kind of staff that we have uh, from an investing perspective really have to roll up their sleeves and uh, work a little bit harder to find those opportunities that don't just pop out at you. So it's not about the general market, uh, whether it's, it's expensive right now, uh, we believe, and, and looking for it to get, and we, we're looking for over the next, who knows, the next year, couple years, uh, we believe that we have to be prepared for uh, a downturn in here. But I think also the Fed's response, the uh, Bank of Canada's response, um, we can't ignore that they will be responding to weakening global circumstances. And I think currently that's why we're seeing a buoyant equity market, uh, because it really is about the, the, the Fed and, and Bank of Canada and other central banks. And they're, it's basically their put when they see the economy going, getting a little bit weaker. So um, we'll continue to invest. We're a long-term investor. We have $191 billion to stay focused on. And um, uh, from that perspective, we're, uh, we're uh, continuing to uh, look for great opportunities. That's what we do. Ron, given everything you just said, uh, maybe it's no surprise that investors are, are looking at something that can give them some growth. Um, cannabis has been this subject we've talked so much about on BNM Bloomberg over the last couple of years, and these valuations have skyrocketed. And then we got some news this week uh, on Cantrust, really a fiasco of sorts. I mean, for, for a pension fund, an institutional investor looking at these sectors like cannabis, um, as you get ready to hand the baton, what would you say about this emerging industry? at least in this country. These are the sorts of things, John, that uh, environmental, social governance issues, which are uh, top of mind for us and everything that we do up here, um, these can be tricky areas that we have to think through and look at carefully. Uh, in this particular sector, uh, we uh, are moving forward slowly. Uh, certainly, uh, we may from time to time have a little bit of it in our portfolio, but the reality is we believe that where this will become a very strong investment opportunity in the future is around the, the medical side of the story. It's still a young industry. Uh, things are evolving and growing, uh, and things do happen uh, along the way, and um, we just have to deal with that as, as it goes. But we have to be mindful before we take the substantial sums of money that we have and really push them into an industry, how that industry is evolving. And so uh, we don't have to be the first ones uh, in. Uh, we definitely can uh, take our time and study it. So we are carefully looking at it. We are studying it carefully internally. And so um, we'll have to see how we evolve. And before you go, Ron, uh, uh, you guys were in the news recently. We, we've talked about the fact that teachers sold at stake in Hudson's Bay. There had initially been uh, a deal on the table with Richard Baker. Um, that ultimately was was not the way by which you divested. Uh, uh, could you maybe walk us through what changed? Um, that, that's John. That's probably something that I should decline to comment on at this point in time. There's a lot of uh, there's a, there's a lot of back and forthing going on that particular subject at this at this moment, and um, uh, uh, I know you'd love me to get into the details, but it's probably not the right time to be getting into these details on uh, Hudson's Bay. It's always what I do. I just I can't help myself, Ron. I have to keep asking the question. <laughs> so what what's next for you? Good so for, uh, <laughs> good for you. <laughs> uh, what what is next for you? What what, do you, what kind of role do you see for yourself after you uh, make your exit from teachers? Well, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, doing a little bit of travel, but um, my life has always been about learning. And from my perspective, uh, I have more things to do than I have time for, no matter what I'm up to. And so uh, uh, as I roll into, uh, 
into retirement, and retirement's probably inappropriate because I don't think I'll ever retire. Uh, I have a number of things that are, that are getting lined up. Um, I've spent a life of learning, uh, lifelong learning, and um, I'm involved in some of the universities uh, here in the city. And uh, for me, giving back through that kind of uh, process is very important to me. So um, don't be surprised if you see me giving the odd lecture at, or two at one of these uh, universities, maybe on finance or the pension uh, community. But that's the kind of thing that I love to do. I'm passionate about learning. It's probably why I'm in this role uh, uh, from a teacher's perspective. It's how I contribute to education and, and, and learning is using my skills up here at the plan. And it's been a, it's been a privilege and it's been an amazing, uh, amazing run and we've got a great crew of people up here. All right, we'll look forward to it. Ron, thanks for the perspective. Ron Mock joining us from the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan.